Simon, it's official this morning. The Chelsea's uh, ownership saga is over. Yep. The Premier League and the UK government have approved the Todd Bowley uh, takeover. Yep. The government saying this morning, following extensive work, we're now satisfied that the full proceeds of the sale will not benefit Abramovich or any other sanctioned individual. We'll now begin the process of assuring, uh, ensuring the proceeds of the sale are used for humanitarian causes in Ukraine, mm -hmm. supporting the victims of war. It's the upshot of all of this, Simon, that this is now all thoroughly acceptable and above board. Well, pretty much, isn't it? We all said we, we said this in the last two or three times. We've encountered the particular roadblocks that were coming up, whether Abramovich was reversing out of a deal that he said he wasn't, whether the government were comfortable with where the proceeds were going to go. We pretty much said on this show that it'll end up where it needs to end up. It's not even the 31st of May, which was the deadline, and they've achieved their outcomes. And I already believe that Chelsea are in the market, aren't they? They're already talking about signing a £17 million player from Sevilla. Uh, yeah, so well, all, all, all they're this, certainly all, talking all about... All the arguments that we were talking about yesterday about poor old Thomas Tuchel being disadvantaged yeah. is a load of old... Yeah, Hogwash. well he's a long time target isn't he, Jules Koundé I think yeah, Simon that's right. and interestingly Tuchel now reportedly has been told by, by Bully you've got 200 million to spend this summer to rebuild your squad so life's not all that bad for Thomas oh, Tuchel far from it, far from it, he's getting rid of some dead wood they clearly didn't want and we can argue whether Rudiger and Christensen and anyone else is dead wood but clearly at one point Chelsea's refusal to negotiate with them within the last year of their contract prior to Bramovich walking out the door indicated they weren't that motivated by them yeah. so what you've got is a changing of the guards that guard may well include Lukaku who probably ranks as one of the biggest disappointments of the season given the transfer fee and ultimately the output and subsequent background noise that he's brought to the fore and nothing very much on the pitch so Chelsea have an opportunity the ownership model won't make any difference because it's, it's somebody else's pound you know, yeah. If you've yeah. still got if still got Marina in there, if you've still got Buck in there, you're going to have still have the same have the method same methods mm -hmm. of communication. Mm -hmm. You're just going to have somebody else writing a check for what it is that the football manager thinks he needs. Yeah, let's talk about Grant Sky getting twenty million as a kind of thanks for everything she's done um, in the in the process of all of this. Well, in the la la so land of football, that's a small bit, isn't it? Yeah, uh, twenty million pound bonus from the takeover. Anyway, Trevor, nineteen points of a differential yeah. between Chelsea and uh, and City. I mean, at the end of the day. Does 200 million quid go a long way to narrowing that gap? It could do. It could do. You've got to look at the ins and outs. Brozier's back. Conor Gallagher's back. Billy Gilmore. Ben Chilwell was out for the season with a, with a knee injury. Uh, Reese James missed a lot of the season. They poss possibly could revisit um, Sammy Abraham the season that he's had. Um, and, and look at the Lukaku situation because he doesn't seem like he's settled too well there. But like you say, with three of the players, Aspilicueta, Rudiger and Christensen leaving the football club, there's a lot of business to do. Thomas Tuchel needs to get his ducks in a row straight away because the summer goes quickly, especially this year. Late season, uh, it's finished. It's going to begin soon uh, in the summer. So there's not a lot of time to do business, but 200 million plus the, the quality players that are coming back from loan, plus obviously we were already talking about uh, re re replacing Rudiger with... Uh, Kuende, um, Jules Kuende, yeah, yeah, which, yeah. which I think which, which will be a great a great um, change for the football club. Mm. Um, but there's a lot of ins and outs. But 200 million pounds, if you spend it wisely, and we've seen clubs do it wisely, seen other clubs do it very poorly. If they do it wisely and recruit well, yeah, that could that could close that gap. So this early, Simon, should we be saying Chelsea fans? It seems this guy Bully is going to be good for your club. Well, look. You don't know. We don't know that because we don't know what his motivations for owning the football club were and whose money he's utilising. Because a significant proportion of it are from a private equity firm called Clearview, and private equity people invest into businesses to make money. Whereas Roman Abramovich invested into Chelsea to do various other things, and that would—that's the reason why he was prepared to write off or actually carry a 1.5 billion pound loan to the football club that he wasn't asking back. When we talk about buying policies, do not remember, don't forget the discussions we had in January about how it was absolutely key component necessary for Newcastle to get off their backside and buy players. Yes. Well, they didn't, did they? That's they bought right. them when they were ready to, That's and they right. bought the right players. So Chelsea must get the right players. For me, it's the balance between them spending £200 million well, £200 million wisely, that enhances the squad, because they spent £100 million last year on what looks on prima facie a waste of time with Lukaku. It shouldn't have been, because it, you know, if you look at what Lukaku achieved in Italy, you would like to think he would have been the missing component for Chelsea. Yeah. So with this in mind, obviously I can't bear these figures of two or three hundred million pound being thrown around as if it's confetti, as if it should be a normal staple diet of what we accept in football. But, but it is the it is the configuration that would make you compete with Manchester City. Yeah. I mean, think about it. What Manchester United is going to do? 
if anyone's under the illusion that Manchester United are not going to set a, a a nuclear missile under football this summer, <laughs> that's then, right. And wrong, bad terminology, I accept for the term the, time of the world that we're living no, in. No, no, but I know what you mean. But they are going to yeah. go for it. Yeah. And you can believe that probably the, the smallest spenders might be Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, actually, in actual fact, uh, Fran Soriano, we're, we're, we're here. He's been saying, Trevor, you know this fella, City's chief executive. He seems to mention Manchester United uh, as many times as he talks about Erling Haaland. We'll get to that later on this morning. A whole bunch of things to get through. Simon, we're coming up to 10.15. Do you want to take us to a break, darling? You, I mean, this is this is what you excel at this. It's 10.15. Time out for us. Back with Simon and Trevor in just a moment. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.